One of the saving graces of 2020 has been some of the really great technology we've seen over the past 12 months. So we on the Android Central video team have put together our top picks for tech gadgets in 2020. Not just Android, but things that have helped our productivity and just helped us escape the general madness of this past year. I'm Alex from Android Central and these are our top tech picks from 2020. My first pick is the phone I've been using since I started reviewing it almost three months ago, the Google Pixel 5. After years of not really knowing what the Pixel line was supposed to be, Google launched its strongest pixels ever in 2020, led by the flagship Pixel 5. It doesn't have the fastest processor or the quickest charging, but at the same time it's proven to me that I don't really need all those things. It's a delight to use and a perfect example of a phone that's greater than the sum of its parts. And while the camera hardware is getting a bit long on the tooth, the Pixel still takes some of the best photos possible on any smartphone. Battery life has been one of the biggest differentiators for this phone for me. It's at that level that few phones reach where I know even if I'm absolutely hammering it throughout the day, it's never going to run out of juice before bedtime. It's literally more than double the useful battery life I remember getting out of the Pixel 4 in 2019, and I really hope battery life becomes a tentpole feature of future Pixels. So while I'll probably have to switch to a bunch of different phones in 2021, my main sim is staying put in the Pixel 5 for the foreseeable future. Next is a set of wireless earbuds I've been using on an almost daily basis, the Huawei FreeBuds Pro. Huawei isn't necessarily a huge name in the audio space, but I've found these pack an ideal combination of comfort, sound quality and features, and so they've become my go-to true wireless earbuds. Starting with the charging case, you've got the convenience of wireless charging in addition to USB-C, which is great. I've mainly been using them without noise cancellation, and in that mode I get around 7 hours per charge. Refills are nice and quick from the charging case, so that's a perfectly fine figure. The gesture controls are great too, squeeze once to play or pause, long squeeze to change ANC modes, or swipe up and down to change volume levels. It's amazing how many earbuds still get this wrong. It's also really handy to be able to connect two devices at once, so if you're taking a zoom call on your laptop you'll still hear notifications coming through from your phone. Plus, anytime you can avoid having to manually deal with Bluetooth connection prompts, the better. Prices for these tend to fluctuate, but you can get them on Amazon right now for less than £130 if you're in the UK. My final pick is something that's only really 50% hardware, it's Google Stadia. I feel like I need to get a bunch of caveats out the way before I get into why I've picked Stadia. First, it's game streaming, so you're going to need a fast internet connection, and not just bandwidth but crucially latency too. There are technical limitations for 4K as well, especially if you use a Mac because of codec support, and if you're playing over Wi-Fi, location services on macOS can cause interruptions too. With all that said, the ability to turn almost any screen that runs Chrome into a high-end console is amazing and a significantly lower barrier to entry than a fixed console under your TV that might cost $500. It still seems slightly surreal to me to be able to play something like Cyberpunk 2077 or Doom Eternal on a fairly basic Windows laptop or a Chromebook or even your phone. Granted, I'm probably having the optimal experience here with Stadia on a relatively fast internet connection, but I've still been surprised how even relatively twitchy games like Doom perform on Stadia and that experience is only going to become more widespread as connection speeds improve. I'm not going to deny that Stadia has taken its time building its library to where it currently is, and that future game support remains uncertain, but right now I've been really impressed with Stadia, and there's no doubt in my mind that this is the future of gaming. If I had to pick three of my favorite devices from 2020, well, I'd have to start off with the Pixel 4a because it's one of the few gadgets I've actually bought this year. My fiance needed a new phone and she loved my Pixel 5 but didn't really need all of the extras like wireless charging, 5G, or a 90Hz display. For literally half the price, the 4a offers an almost indistinguishable experience with relatively quick performance, the same fantastic camera, and Android 11 software with constant updates. This was actually the only Pixel I hadn't gotten to use this year until we bought one, but luckily the reviews are true, this is really an incredible device for the money. On the complete opposite end of the value spectrum, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is the most expensive product I reviewed all year, but it's also the one that excited me the most. Not because of the $2,000 price tag, but because it was such an incredible year-over-year -year improvement coming from the previous Galaxy Fold. The inner display was less fragile and featured a smaller camera cutout. The outer display was actually useful this time around, and the cameras were fantastic, as was the battery life. In fact, if Samsung hadn't asked for it back at the end of the review period, I'd still be using the Z Fold 2 today. 
it still has some of the most powerful specs on the market, and the experience really is unlike any other. This obviously isn't a phone that everybody needs to buy, but those who can justify the cost definitely won't regret it. My third and final pick isn't a phone, but it's been just as useful in the month or so I've had it. The Shure MV7 is my new favorite consumer microphone. It's based on the Shure SM7B that was famously used on albums like Michael Jackson's Thriller, but with modern touches like USB output and a touch-sensitive strip on top for adjusting your gain on the fly. Of course, it also supports XLR, and you can even record from both outputs at the same time. What makes it even better is Shure's software, which is available for both phones and computers. I'm usually pretty skeptical about this sort of thing, but it gives you exactly what you need for great audio. You can jump between different compression and EQ settings while you're recording, which might negate the need to process your audio in post. In fact, I'm recording this voiceover directly into the Shure software on my phone. It's just awesome. 2020 was the year that value flagships really came into their own, and a prime example of that is the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE. The goal of the phone was to deliver about 90% of the regular S20 experience for hundreds less, and lucky for us, Samsung pulled it off with flying colors. I used the S20 FE as my daily driver for part of the year, and during that time, it was every bit as enjoyable as much more expensive handsets. The 120Hz display looks incredible, the Snapdragon 865 allows for blazing fast performance, and the 3 camera system performs quite well. When you pair that with things like reliable battery life, there's basically nothing to complain about. With the retail price of $700 and Samsung often discounting it to just $600 or even less, the Galaxy S20 FE set a new standard of what we could expect from lower cost flagship devices. Looking outside of the smartphone world, another highlight for me was the Nest Audio. We've been waiting for a proper successor to the original Google Home for a long time, and thankfully Google delivered. As far as the hardware is concerned, the Nest Audio is everything I could ask for. The fabric design is gorgeous, you can get it in a ton of great colors, and I felt pretty good about my purchase knowing that the fabric is made entirely out of recycled bottles. More important than all of that though is the fact that the Nest Audio sounds really good given the $100 asking price. Now this isn't a speaker that's going to replace your Sonos One anytime soon, but music and podcasts are thoroughly enjoyable to listen to, especially when you pair two Nest Audios together for stereo sound. That's the setup I currently have in my office for listening to music throughout the day, and it's been a fantastic experience all around. Last but certainly not least for me, there's the Chromecast with Google TV. Now this is one of my most anticipated gadgets of the entire year, and after having one hooked up to my living room TV for the past couple of months, I honestly can't imagine living life without it. Things like 4K, HDR10, and Dolby Vision are all great, but where the Chromecast really shines is with its Google TV software. This could have been an absolute train wreck if not handled properly, but thanks to a clean interface and robust support from all of the major streaming services, Google TV has become my favorite way for browsing and managing all of my streaming content. Rather than jumping back and forth between countless apps, everything is organized directly within Google TV. I get recommendations on the homepage, can add stuff to my watch list, and find a specific title just by asking the Google Assistant. Everything about the Google TV experience is better than I could have hoped, and at just $50, it makes the Chromecast the new undisputed champ as far as streaming hardware is concerned. That's it for now, let us know in the comments which gadgets made 2020 more bearable for you, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our Galaxy S21 coverage coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next year.